And you know, I don't know if you realize this, but when people want something, they're going to find a way to get it. And remember this, mob guys are very resourceful. You know, they're on the street, they're very resourceful, and they realized that people still wanted to drink alcohol. I don't know if you know this, but in New York alone, during the time of Prohibition, there were over 30,000 speakeasies. Speakeasies were places that were hidden. You know, law enforcement wasn't supposed to know about it, even though they busted them quite often. But it's a place that people can go and enjoy their liquor. And most all of them were mob run. And this is how the mob became so wealthy, because they were providing something that people wanted. And, you know, they were smart. They did it. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is good on this end. Praise God for that. And you know, I, I got to tell you, I am so thankful to all of you who are my loyal viewers. And there are many. I mean, we're, we're approaching 800,000 viewers. We've done it in less than two years. I think that's, you know, a, a a pretty amazing feat, I would say, because I do pay attention to some of the other things that are going on. And it's really all because of all of you. And I mean that. And we really appreciate it. My team works hard to put the best possible content we can together. And uh, we really put a lot of effort into it. And we're really very grateful to all of you. And I mean that. You know, as a result of that, we want to give back. You know, we want to do things to give back. And I'm very excited about something that's coming up. You know, I will tell you, I get a lot of opportunities coming my way. A lot of people come to me with different products and different things they'd like me to represent and so on and so forth. And I'm pretty, you know, particular about it. I'm not just putting myself out there and, and, you know, taking every deal that comes around. I don't do that. But I'm very excited about something, a deal that I got into a little over a year ago that's kind of blossoming now. And it's something that is ready to really go to market. And I'm very excited about it. And it's all about wine. Yes, I have my own brand of wine. It's called Michael Francis brand. I'm very excited about it. Like I said, it's taken a year, a little over a year to put this together. I'm excited with the people that I'm involved with. And as a result of that, we want to make an offer to all of you. As of today, we are launching this product, Michael Francis Wine. And along with it, we're doing a huge giveaway. And I mean huge. Everybody that comes on board and that wants to have this wine, and we're hoping every one of you, okay, that are watching, have this in your wine cellar or on your shelf. You're going to offer it to your guests. Hopefully, you're going to be proud. You're going to enjoy the wine. So as a result of that, we are doing a huge giveaway, and I mean huge. And I want you to click on the link below. All the information, all the details are going to be there for what you need to do to be involved in this giveaway. And we're giving away subscriptions, annual subscriptions to wine. We're gonna be giving away cases of wine. I'm gonna be signing bottles. We're doing a whole bunch of things that my team has put together, and we wanna extend this to all of you. So click on the link below. All the details are gonna be there. And you know what? Subscribe to the channel because we're gonna continue doing things like this continue giving back, and you get alerts. When you subscribe, you get alerts. You'll know what we're doing. You'll, it'll be in your feed. You'll see the things that we're doing, and I promise you, you're going to be excited about it. And I'm really excited, and, and i got to tell you why. You know, why did I get involved in this wine? You know, the person that came to me, a nice young man who was very, very committed to this, and uh, he brought me this wine, and it's from Armenia. Now, Armenia, I got to tell you why it was attractive to me. I don't know if any of you know this, but you know, for us Christians and for those of you that, you know, have a biblical foundation or background, I will tell you this. In the days of Noah's Ark, when the flood subsided and all the water went down and the ark was seated at the foot of Mount Ararat, that was the area that the first vineyards on earth, on the new earth, on the transformed earth, were ever planted. So the first vineyards came out of Armenia. I researched this. I think Fortune magazine did a big article about it. It's the truth. That's where the first vineyards came. And you know, it was a transformation of the world at that point in time. These grapes, these vineyards, 
represented a transformed world. And you know, look people, my whole story has been about transformation. You know where I was at one time? I was a guy on the street, was heavily involved for over 20 years in the mob life, and my life has been transformed. I don't claim credit for that. I've been very blessed, very fortunate. God got a hold of me, and the rest, as they say, is history. But transformation has been very important to me. And you know, the whole idea of wine is so important to me because I'm fascinated with the process. My wife and I go to Napa Valley a lot, and I want to make this clear. Before I started drinking wine, I never drank. I mean, I, I was a guy, even on the street, I never drank. You know, I would have a white wine spritzer every once in a while. I didn't drink beer, didn't drink anything. My dad the same way, we didn't drink. But I got so fascinated by the process of wine. You know, growing wine, it's a science, and it's so involved, and it's so intricate, and it's fascinating, you know, for when those grapes, uh, or those uh, plants are planted, and how they come up with the different blends and variations of wines. It's really a fascinating story. I get so interested. Whenever I go to, uh, you know, any of the wine tasting places, I want to hear those sommeliers, and I want to hear what they have to say. I want to be educated about wine. And, you know, I love to have a glass of wine with my dinner now. It's just relaxing. It's comforting. And listen, you know, for all of you Christians out there, some of you have said, Michael, how can you be pushing wine? Well, let me remind you, the first miracle that Jesus ever performed was turning water into wine at a wedding at the request of his mother. So if drinking wine was sinful or something that Christians shouldn't do, I don't think Jesus would have accommodated his mother. So now, obviously, you're not supposed to get drunk because drunkenness can cause things and cause you to do things you're not supposed to do. But I want to get that clear for any of you Christians out there that might challenge me on this. Just read your Bible. It's very evident. But, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing process. So as a result of that, again, click on the link below. Subscribe so you keep hearing about these giveaways and everything that we're going to do to accommodate you and to thank you. Thank you really from the bottom of my heart and my whole team for the way you've allowed us to grow so rapidly. We appreciate it so much. We're going to continue to give you great content, but I want you to click on the link below, get all the details for the giveaway. I know you're going to love the wine. You're going to love everything that we're doing, and we're offering it to all of you first because you've been so loyal to us. We're giving back. And you know, thinking about this wine and everything, I've spoken to you before about prohibition. And I've told you that with no uncertain terms, it was the government that created the power of Cosa Nostra, the mafia, in this country. Before the time of prohibition, you know, the mob was just a bunch of people running around, extorting people, trying to get something together because they didn't have money. You know, yeah, if you're going to extort a shopholder for some money, you're going to get something, but you're not going to be rich, you're not going to be powerful, you're not going to be able to put an organization together. But what happened in prohibition, the mob understood that, hey, consumers still want to drink wine. And remember, it wasn't a crime to drink the wine. It was a crime to manufacture it. It was a crime to sell it, and it was a crime to transport it. And I don't know if you know this, but, you know, in the time leading up to the Volstead Act, which was the Prohibition Act, people that were wealthy and people that could, you know, handle this and afford to it, they went out and bought all the liquor that they can possibly buy. I heard stories of wealthy people that went out and bought an entire liquor store so that they can store it and drink it in the privacy of their homes without being in trouble because you were allowed to drink the wine. Yeah, and understand this, you know, when people want something, they're going to find a way to get it. And remember this, mob guys are very resourceful. You know, they're on the street, they're very resourceful, and they realized that people still wanted to drink alcohol. I don't know if you know this, but in New York alone, during the time of Prohibition, there were over 30,000 speakeasies. Speakeasies were places that were hidden. You know, law enforcement wasn't supposed to know about it, even though they busted them quite often. But it's a place that people can go and enjoy their liquor. And most all of them were mob run. And this is how the mob became so wealthy. I mean, Al Capone was earning $100 million a year. And those are real numbers. Lucky Luciano, Maya Lansky, all of those guys were earning tons of money because they were providing something that people wanted. And, you know, they were smart. They did it. But, you know, there were other ways, too. You know, originally it was um, for moral reasons that prohibition came into place. I think the women's temperance group was in front of that, and they didn't want liquor. They thought it was sinful. And, uh, you know, they gave a lot of reasons. They said that, you know, people are out getting drunk and prisons are getting filled up and alcohol is causing people to do bad things and so on and so forth. They went into that and they got to the ears of politicians and it was just the timing at that time and, okay, prohibition. 
But, you know, people were still able to get it. You know, it was able to be sold in, in drugstores for medicinal reasons. If you uh, had a prescription for it, I think you were able to get a pint a month, something like that. And people were doing that. There were other ways. If you were a, a religious person, I think you're still able to have wine for religious reasons. You know, in the Catholic uh, Church, uh, they turn wine into the blood of Jesus. And so, you know, churches were able to have wine at that point in time, and people were able to get to that wine. So there was a lot of stuff like that going on. Trust me on that. And it lasted for about 13 years. I think the law was instituted in uh, 1920, and it was repealed finally in 1933. And it was President Roosevelt who ran, you know, a part of his campaign was he was repealing the Volstead Act because he knew. You know, he knew what was going on with speakeasies. I think he saw that, you know, people on the street were getting wealthy. There was a lot of violence as a result of that. A lot of stuff was going on. So it was doing more harm than good by having prohibition. And finally, uh, after he became president, uh, the Bolstead Act was repealed, and there it was. You know, liquor was available to people, much to their delight. I think people were partying in the streets, you know, when it was uh, repealed. So, you know, I, I found out in life, you know, when people want something, and unfortunately, we're certainly not encouraging anybody to abuse the alcohol. I mean, I don't. Look, when I drink a glass of wine, I drink it with my meal. We relax. You know, it's just, it's just nice. It's kind of a different kind of alcohol. It's meant to accompany a nice meal. It's meant to be sitting around the table with guests and enjoying yourself, you know? It has a transforming quality about it. I mean, I drink a glass of wine, I calm down, I'm happy, I'm nice, you know? Just the opposite, and of course, like I said, you don't abuse it. So, you know, I'm excited. It's the reason why I got involved in this, because I love wine, I really believe in the product, and it has a transforming feeling about it, you know, from those grapes throughout that process, you know, into wine that we sit down at a table with family and friends and we enjoy. And that's what we do with wine. We we sit down with family and friends, we open up a beautiful bottle of wine, and we enjoy. And that's what it's all about. So again, we are so excited about it. We're doing this huge giveaway. Click on to the uh, link below. Get all the details. Do it now. We're going to be giving away a lot of stuff. A real subscription to the wine. I mean, every month you're going to get a delivery of wine. On me, on Francis, on the house. There's bottles that I'm going to be signing that you're not going to want to open up. You're going to put it on your shelf and go say, hey, look what this mob guy gifted me. He gave me a bottle of wine. And a bunch of other things that we're doing. My team has really come up with some creative ways to pay back and to show our thanks for the loyalty that you've showed me. So that's what it's all about. We're launching it today. Click on, don't miss, an offer you can't refuse. I can always use, you know, all of those sayings, but uh, I mean it, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for the opportunity of allowing me to grow like this. I really mean it, and giving me the opportunity to give back to all of you. So that's it. Click on the link below. How do I always leave you the same way? Be safe. Be healthy. I'm going to add something. Enjoy Francis wine. And yes, God bless you all, and I'll see you next time.